So now in this video we're coming back to our current source video, but this is a multimeter video. We're just using this circuit because it's a very informative circuit. We are going to measure voltage. So we have the current source. Ultimately, whatever voltage we set to the trim pot, we're using a 10 volt power supply. The trim pot is a variable voltage divider. We can get anywhere between 0 and 10 volts. Actually, the power supply is set to 10.10 uh, .10 volts but we're going to lose a little bit of voltage where there's resistance and stuff. And there you can see uh, the power supply says it's providing uh, 3 milliamps of current. Last uh, video we looked at this circuit because I didn't move the trim pot so hopefully it's still spot on. Um, we got about 2.5 uh, milliamps of uh, current flowing through there. Probably about 1 milliamp of current. It's a 10k uh, trim pot and uh, 10 volts. Um, so in any case uh, we got the a voltage set there so since this is a 1000 ohm resistor but again it's not perfectly 1000 you know maybe it is uh, but probably not it's probably slightly off but in any case um, since it's a 1000 ohm resistor we can expect about uh, first I'll measure the trim pot um, because the voltage across the resistor should be the same as uh, what we got the trim pot hopefully I don't short anything I have the probes backwards um, but there you can see it is uh, practically uh, 2.5 volts. Um, it's okay to measure backwards. I didn't mean to do that. Um, maybe you want to avoid that, but uh, it won't damage the meter. You'll just get a negative voltage. Um, that's really not a terrible mistake. So yeah, that's what I uh, assumed that we were, um, when we got to the current, it was 2.49 uh, milliamps. And um, so that's what we expect through the resistor if there was 2.49 volts across the resistor. Now we're going up one spot. So that was the plus. That's where we're setting our voltage. And the way we have this wired up, we should have that same exact voltage at the minus. And it looks like, I think that is spot on what we had there. So now that is not the output voltage though. We got negative feedback. The output is coming to the uh, inverting input negative before it heads to ground. The LED though takes a couple volts. Um, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. Well, should be able to see what that is uh, now. You take the uh, number that we had at the inverting input, and the output has to provide a little bit more voltage. Should be about two volts higher. And um, once we get things settled, I think uh, I think you see that there. So it's not going to be spot on two volts, um, but uh, but it's close. What is that like 1.9 maybe um, in that range? If I come down one more spot, we should still have. Um, so I think it was uh, 2.485 uh, before. So, you know, we're kind of bumping stuff. Might change things slightly. But uh, the numbers are lining up uh, pretty well right there. And uh, so in any case, we have the trim pot there. Um, we can adjust it. I did that in the previous video. It adjusts the LED brightness so we knew like current was going up and down. And uh, we're losing a little bit out of that 10.10 .10, uh, volts coming out here. But uh, yeah, that's the main takeaway. As long as this is a good current source, um, we could also make sure and get the exact measurement of that resistance. The exact, uh, well, we got pretty good measurement of the voltage uh, coming in. And um, a good current source does get you uh, whatever the voltage at the plus input is right there. 2.488 should be the exact same right here uh, 2.4 you know it's a spec off but that's really close as far as I'm concerned that's pretty much spot on right there um, again might be how I'm measuring it or something might influence it a little bit now we have uh, the uh, red LED right there I almost forgot so that's with the LED we could look at with the blue so blue needs some more voltage that's one reason why I'm sticking with this uh, a lower voltage. Um, but yeah, we looked that we will still have the same amount of uh, current going through here. So first I'll go to the plus, should be the same voltage and uh, same voltage down there, even though the blue LED uh, drops more voltage. So this one will be higher than what we had with red. We'll look at that again. So 5.314 um, with the red one should be about uh, 4. Uh, three uh one four you know so it may not be 
perfectly spot on, but extremely close to that. As I bump the components, they may like add a little resistance to the circuit or whatever. But yeah, we got 4.3 uh, plus some change right there, which we expected. Now, this is a current source. So this is one way that you can uh, add short circuit protection. So we are gonna short circuit the output. So the short circuit protection, you don't really short circuit the power supply, you got other circuitry to make sure to limit the current if you, you know, short, try to short the power supply. Um, so we got that jumper in there. Now instead of the LED, in fact, I'm going to uh, bump this down a little bit so I can uh, make contact. Uh, so first, yeah, let's get to the plus voltage again. And that should be the output voltage as well. Pretty close to spot on, if not completely uh, spot on. And there we can see that. And of course, that's coming to this part of the jumper, going over there to the inverting input. The output, what the output is doing is making sure that the inverting input, the minus, is the same as what we set at the plus. And I don't know what, uh, if that's because I'm making it lose connection when uh, I press on the resistor. Uh, so yeah, we'll look at the output again. Right there, 2.489. And that should be the exact same because it's a jumper. So it should be the exact same at the uh, inverting input. And uh, yeah, it was moving around because I was like moving this jumper or something. Um, but we can see the numbers are lining up pretty well. Again, you got variables which may kind of shift things like a little bit here and there. But uh, in this case, we see that uh, whatever voltage we set to uh, the non-inverting input plus, it's being transferred to the inverting input. The output has to be able to provide that voltage plus whatever the load needs. So LEDs don't uh, limit current, uh, but they do build up voltage. So the red LED, the output had to be you know close to two volts higher than the voltage we wanted to set across the resistor, whereas the blue LED had to be about three. Now, let's, uh, let's go back, and I uh, probably should do the red one. The blue one's gonna get pretty bright because we have the, uh, the other resistor. Um, so I measured the current. If I cut the resistance in close to half, this is 510 ohms instead of 500, but that's about 1,000 right there. And so we looked at if I use half the resistance here, I get twice the current. It lined up pretty well right there. Again, we didn't have perfect numbers because it's 510 plus. There's tolerance, you know, it might be 1% uh, higher or lower. So yeah, we'll just verify the, um, you know, if I kind of bump this to it, it'll change a little bit. But verify the voltage coming to the, the plus, 2.494, again, holding pretty steady. And then we'll uh, come down. Uh, down here and we got uh, 2.495 so that is with the uh, 1k I believe is that what it is no that was a 510 um we have uh, the LED should be about twice as bright we saw that the uh, voltage is lined up though um, that's gonna be the voltage across the resistor 2.495 whether it's 510 or uh, 1000 so the voltage should be uh, lining up perfectly. The LED should be about half as bright uh, right there. And we could also look at the power supply to see that uh, the current is basically doubling. But yeah, voltage is holding pretty steady. And we'll just do that. We saw with the meter in the, the previous video. So this is the uh, about three milliamps of current. That's total though, because some of it's going through the, the trim pot. Um, so yeah, you can see it's about uh, 0.3. And now I think it'll be like five when I get the uh, 510 ohm resistor in there. It's going to be about double, but again, there's some other current going through the circuitry. Uh, but there you can see it go up with that other one. And we saw when we swapped the resistors, we got the same voltage across the resistor, no matter uh, what it is. So again, um, you know, I went through the circuit in detail. As I said before, we set a voltage there. The output's going to do what it can to keep the voltage the same at the inverting input. That's uh, the way it works when you got negative feedback of course we have a load the LED um, you could get rid of the uh, load though uh, but whatever it takes uh, to get the voltage the same between these two the output sets that voltage so with the red LED needs to be two volts higher than what we got there 
There's also a voltage limit to what the output can provide. So I'm gonna keep, even though this is long, I'm gonna keep this video, this scene. This is the first time I shot this actually. It's going pretty well. So I'm going up to the uh, max right now. It's gonna be about 10 volts. So I was talking about this a lot while we were looking at the, uh, the, the sheet and the circuit and everything. And uh, so again, we'll look at uh, the supply voltage and 10.05 uh, because there's a little bit of resistance in the wires and stuff. Now we'll look at the output voltage of the uh, trim pot right there, uh, 10 volts. And uh, so we're not going to see that, you know, across the load. First off, the LED drops about 2 volts. We got uh, 6.1. So this is actually what, even though I said 7 sometimes, because that uh, was what was on the power supply. Now it says 12 because that's the 510 ohm resistor. I'm going to pluck that and put the 1000 ohm uh, back in. But it should say 7 over there. Uh, yeah, so that's, remember, the current going through the load in addition to the trim pot, which is about uh, one milliamp of uh, current because it's 10 volts, 10,000 ohms. Um, so yeah, we'll come back and uh, take a look at those again. We have the, uh, and I shorted it, that's not good, but it didn't turn the power supply off. So I think we're all right, all right, 10.06. And um, yeah, that was a full blown short. That would have been bad if we didn't use a power supply that limited current. So you gotta be uh, kind of careful when you are taking a measurement the way that I am. So be aware of that. This is not the best way to take these measurements. And uh, so yeah, there we got 10, but that's not gonna be now what's across the resistor right there. First off, the LED needs a couple of volts across it. As you can see, just shy of uh, two volts. And now we'll look at the output voltage. And uh, yeah, that's what you can expect with a single supply um, integrated circuit. What that means is that it goes down to ground really well, but not to the full positive supply. Uh, because if it went to the full positive supply, if it could provide 10 volts right now with a 10 volt supply, that would be a rail to rail op amp. But those usually can't even provide like enough current to uh, light an LED in many cases. Um, sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Uh, so usually single supply is, is used because they can provide more current under most conditions, be aware of that. So yeah, we're limited to about a volt and a half short of the supply rail. If we lowered uh, the supply voltage like to nine, then our maximum would be, you know, about 7.5 and so on. If we go to eight, probably to be about 6.5 that the output can provide. So we got to stay within limits. So I'm going to set this down, you know, somewhere around where we were uh, before. And uh, the LED, even though it doesn't really look like it, it probably got dimmer. Um, but again, you know, that was saying like seven before. Now it's like four, probably four plus, plus a little bit. So current didn't change totally drastically, again, because we weren't getting to that full supply uh, voltage when it came to the output. Near the very top, there's a range where we are at the limit. You know, I can lower this down to about 8.5. And then I gotta go lower before the output voltage will drop because it's already fallen short of the supply voltage. So in any case, uh, yeah, that is uh, about it. Went on a lot longer than I expected, but uh, hopefully you still found it interesting. The uh, measurements aren't terribly exciting. That's why I mostly have been avoiding doing them while showing the uh, circuit. Uh, I've just been kind of explaining what's going on and I figure you can take the measurements later um, if you want, because usually people stop watching the video by the time I start taking measurements anyways. So I think that was a waste of time, but I think it's still good to make separate videos about them. Because um, then you'll probably watch the uh, measurements at the beginning of the video. And uh, instead of just ignoring it when it's later on in the original video. But that's enough rambling. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting into the screen. And check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.